Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 3, Lesson 5, Shapes of Graphs. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine whether functions have line symmetry, and if so, find the line of symmetry. You need to be able to identify extrema and where functions are increasing and decreasing. And you need to be able to determine the end behaviors of graphs of functions. Let's learn symmetry of graphs of functions. The graphs of some functions exhibit a key feature called symmetry. A figure has line symmetry if each half of the figure matches the other side exactly. The example on the left has line symmetry on the y-axis. So if you notice where this orange line is, it is exactly on the y-axis, and the graph is a reflection that matches each other on each side. So essentially that line of symmetry cut the figure exactly in half. On the right side, we have our line symmetry, but it's on a line that's not the y-axis. It's shifted over 1. So our axis of symmetry then would be on the line of x equals negative 1. That's the line where it crossed. And it still has symmetry because each half is a reflection of the other. Example 1, line symmetry. Determine whether each function has line symmetry. Explain. So first one, is there any place that we can draw a vertical line where it's exactly reflected? So the first one, there's no line that we can draw to make the right half a mirror image of the left half. So this does not have any line symmetry. For the second one, there is a place where we could draw right here, where if I were to flip one side over that line, it would line up exactly on the other. So this one has line symmetry on the line, x is equal to 1.5. For the third one, is this symmetric? Can we cut it exactly in half and have it be a mirror image? Yes, it would be on that line of x is equal to negative two. And this last one, if we were to cut it in half, so maybe about right there, you might think, yeah, there's some symmetry, but if we flip it, this would end up having to look like that, and that would have to look like that, so it is not symmetrical. This does not have any line symmetry. So be careful. There was no way to divide that one. Check your understanding. Look at the graph. Does this have line symmetry? And if it does, what is the line of symmetry? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So yes, this has line symmetry. It is a reflection over that line x equals 3. If you were to take one half and fold it on top of the other, it would match. Example 2, interpret symmetry. Our real world context is fountains. A fountain is spraying a stream of water into the air. The graph represents the height of the stream of water, y, at x distances from the fountain. Use the graph to find and interpret any symmetry of the function. If we look at the function, here, notice they have some dashed parts and some solid parts. That's just because the dashed parts wouldn't actually exist in real life. If this fountain is spraying forward, it's not going to spray down and backward. And then this would be like the edge of the ground here. It's not going to go below ground. So looking at the graph, though, is it symmetrical? Yes, it's symmetrical over that line of x equals 2. So even if we just saw this first part, it's still symmetrical up there. In the context... The symmetry can tell you that the height of the stream of water, when it's 0 to 2 feet away, is the same as the height when it's from 2 to 4 feet away. So this can be super useful knowing that the height here is the same as the height here, or that the height here is the same as the height here. So symmetry can help us a lot in context in knowing how high things are and how long it took things to get there. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and use the graph to describe any symmetry for the function. Then interpret the symmetry in context. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. So this one is exhibiting some symmetry around this point here. What line is that at? That is not the y-axis. That is not 8. 8 would be somewhere around here. Not 28.25. That would be somewhere around here. It's going to be symmetric at 90. And what would this mean in context? So reading through these, the height of the golf ball when it's traveled from 0 to 8 is the same as the height of the golf ball when it traveled from 8 to 25. Well, this is how far it's traveled. We're not talking about 0 to 8 or 8 to 25, not A. So the height of the golf ball when it's traveled from 0 to 90, 90 was that cutoff, is the same as from 90 to 180. That one would make more sense. The distance the ball has traveled from 0 to 8 is the same as when it traveled from 8 to 25. No. We need the x-axis for symmetry, or the distance the ball has traveled is the same from 0 to 90 as it is from 90 to 180. 
The last one you might think, but that wouldn't really make sense because if you hit a golf ball, it keeps going through time and lands. What this last one was saying is if you hit the golf ball and it's going and then all of a sudden now it's coming back because at zero feet, it would have to be the same distance as 180. And if it's at zero at zero, it has to come back. So we we're talking about the height after it's traveled. Okay, so your height up here versus your distance. Let's learn extrema of graphs of functions. A function is increasing where the graph goes up and decreasing where the graph goes down when viewed from left to right. I like to think of increasing and decreasing as a roller coaster. If you're going down, you're decreasing, then you hit the bottom and then you're increasing on your roller coaster and then you hit the top and you're decreasing again. The points that are located on the relatively high or low function values are called extrema. Point A is a relative minimum because no other point nearby has a lesser y-coordinate. So it's the lowest point in that area. Yes, there's a point over here that's lower, but not in that direct area near A. Point B is a relative maximum because around it, there's no other point that's larger. The minimums are going to be the bottoms of the hills, while the maximums are essentially the tops of any hills. Example three, determine increasing and decreasing parts of a graph of a function. So determine where f of x is increasing and or decreasing. When x is greater than zero, so that's where those extrema can help. When x is bigger than zero, the function is going up. It's increasing from x is greater than zero. But when it's less than zero, my function is decreasing. So it decreases till it gets to zero, then it hits that minimum and then it increases after zero. So again, like we did in the last lesson, we can write where it switches, and that number is what's gonna be used for our intervals. And we're just using the x coordinate. Check your understanding. So for x is greater than one, f of x, is it increasing or decreasing? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that it's decreasing. So here is when x is 1. So if x is larger than 1, that's on that side. What's happening to it? It is going down at that point. It is decreasing. Example 4. Determine extrema of the graph of a function. So determine this extrema of f of x, then identify each point as a relative maximum or relative minimum. So the extrema are going to be at point B up there and point C. That's the high point and then the low point. Which one is the relative minimum? So the minimum is point C. That's where it's at the bottom, the lowest. So C is our minimum. And then our maximum is point B, since no other point around it is higher. B is the maximum. Check your understanding. Which point or points show the relative minimums? Select all that apply. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. We want minimums, so we're looking for the bottoms of the hills. So B and D. C is a maximum. A and E are both x-intercepts, but they are not the minimum parts of those areas. Example five, interpret extrema of the graph of a function. Our real context is comic books. A comic book store uses a function to model their profit in thousands of dollars, given the price in dollars that they charge for individual issues. Determine whether point D is a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither, then interpret its meaning in the context. So first, D is at the top of the hill, meaning it's a relative maximum. Every point around it has a less Y coordinate. So what is it representing? It's representing the greatest profit. So it earns about $80,000 for greatest profit based on how much it's charging per issue. Check your understanding, read through the situation, determine if point A is a relative maximum or relative minimum, then determine if after point A, his height is increasing or decreasing. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, he reached a relative maximum. We wanted that high. Then after that, his height is decreasing. You can see it's going down from left to right. Let's learn end behavior of graphs of functions. So the end behavior just describes the functions of a value at the positive and negative extremes, or the ends. So what you're gonna be looking for are these little arrows at the end. So for this one, as you move left, 
So as you're going left of the x values in the domain, what's happening to the y values? It's increasing. It would keep going up. On the other end, as you move to the right, what's happening? The graph seems to keep going down. So as x increases, y is decreasing. Example six, determine the end behavior of the graph of a linear function. So what's the end behavior here? For all of these, there are two things you need to consider. What's happening as x decreases and what's happening as x increases. So first, as you go left, when x is decreasing, what's happening to the graph? It seems to be going down farther and farther and farther. So y gets increasingly negative. It's going down. So as x decreases, y decreases. This here is our end behavior. As we go to the right, our y seems to be going up. It's getting more positive. So as x increases, then y increases. Again, that combination right there is our end behavior. Check your understanding. What is the end behavior of this line? What happens as x increases? What happens as x decreases? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said, as x increases, y is also increasing. And as x decreases, y decreases. Example seven, determine the end behavior of the graph of a nonlinear function. This works the same way. We're just looking at the arrows at the end. So for this one, as we move left on the graph, our function seems to be going down. So as x decreases, y also decreases. As we move to the right, our value is going up. So as x increases, y increases. Same thing with nonlinear as it was with linear. Check your understanding. Determine the end behavior of these two functions. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For this one, as x increases, y increases. And as x decreases, our arrow this time was going up. Y is increasing. For the second one, as x increases, the arrow is going up. Y increases. And same with decreasing, our value is going up. 